It is 7 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. Continuing on with the Archon podcast series. And, you know, I also thought, well, well, wait a minute. Maybe I should delete those Archon podcasts. What will the women think? Oh, no. What would my mother think if she ever decided to come back to my channel and out of curiosity see what's being said? Oh no, what if the only person that's contributed to whatever it is, my freedom, to what I'm trying to do in the last year, what if that person came back and and heard me repeat the story about the trauma-based mind control that she tried to create? Oh no, oh no, the Archon fears, the Archon fears, louder, louder, quieter, quieter, louder, quieter, okay, let's just turn it off. And let's just leave the videos up. And let's just leave the fears of what could happen behind us in the dust, in the wind. As we turn our attention from the rear view mirror, as we look forward into the open free roads before us ahead. It's clear when people understand the message being said. And it's oh so clear. When women would prefer to not comment. Or to assume that this podcast series is about promoting men over women. Or something to that effect without actually addressing the subject matter of the Archons themselves. Or other forces or other intelligences that I'm convinced are having a blast treating the human species like some some video game. Controlling human beings with remote control. Getting off on it. Getting off on uh, convincing someone to relinquish their free will. Their sovereignty. Their own originality. It's as if there are forces in this universe that are getting their own pleasure, molding us, changing us, altering us into something else. And in the most extreme of cases, taking something that was born an original, taking something that was born real, and modifying that human being into behaving like it's more like a counterfeit, or a copycat, or a clone. The grid itself, the city itself, the system itself, no one listening to this, I don't don't want anyone to feel bad about who you are or where you live, for those of you that are listening to this. But there is an agenda to keep us in the city, in bondage, in a state of paying rent, in a state, especially for those of us that are men, of chasing women indefinitely, giving them attention, and, and, and most of all, bad women. Not even women that necessarily deserve it. And so like the movie The Matrix, the warnings of the woman in the red dress that attracts with her beauty, the beauty which is in fact very deadly. The city today has a lot of distractions. It has a lot of negative energies. It has a lot of people in those cities going through a lot of trauma. And so there's a lot of people that are releasing pain together. That somehow or another, in their minds, in their thoughts, It is believed that life is still easier living alongside many other people that are suffering, your neighbors, uh, people within a few miles of you. There There is this sense of safety, and it is that mammalian aspect of us that can be controlled by the archons, uh, that can be thrown things in the media and in our world that ultimately frighten us and lead us at times to think that it's easier to be around more people. And where that really comes from, we can meditate on that. But maybe it's a sense of loneliness. Certainly there is chaos within the individual mind. And so when there are things to distract the mind, whether going to a movie house, or going to a pub, or going on a date, 
or getting uh, attention from a woman uh, in response to giving the woman attention at a time when it's desired and not seen as something that's acoustic. In today's day and age, living in the city is, is, is a very uncomfortable experience for, for a man, especially if he has a conscience, especially if he has morality. Because he is faced now with so much evil around him, tempting him to absorb himself in the world of materialism. Most of all, to be accepted by a female, to be seen by a female as a potential provider. Uh, that is the goal of many men, or to be seen as valuable. And in today's day and age, that requires uh, activity, participation in the workplace, which is not a place that is stagnant or not moving, but a place that is constantly changing where people are constantly making less. But the ultimate reason most men work in general or live out their lives is to attract a female into their world or to have money that can attract a female into their world, whether that's temporarily for maybe one night for the purpose of having sex, also known as a one-night stand, or perhaps something on a more regular basis. The human body is ultimately wired to have sex with as many partners as possible. This also causes complications in our physical world. If people are uh, just chasing their own pleasures of the flesh without realizing that there are consequences. In this Archon podcast series, I should remind that there are many researchers and people that talk about this subject that talk about how Archon attachments and Archon being used as a general word, as a word to pretty much describe uh, the entirety of the, the spectrum of what we would call the, the world of the dark ETs. And there are descriptions of Archons that match descriptions of greys, reptilians. Uh, ultimately, Archons are the ultimate shapeshifters that alter their form that are involved in deceiving humanity or human consciousness, that are able to hijack consciousness in some cases and invade dreams. Again, this is not something that a lot of people think about when they believe automatically, and a lot of women do, that their dreams ultimately are messages from their higher self. And that those realms that they may be traveling in, those astral realms, in some cases people believe that this is something that is uh, some sort of example of their spiritual enlightenment or their spiritual ascension, that they're able to perceive certain dimensions of reality or astral planes, and that they're able to perceive the words in their head, the, the voices in their head. They're able to pick up on those thoughts that are being beamed into their head. At some cases, misidentifying those thoughts as their own, and in some cases, misidentifying those external thoughts as coming from a friendly spirit that has come to them with, with a, an intention to help. <laughs> no strings attached. So there's this global nation, a nation, global nature to the people within this nation, global nature to the people within this world that have misinterpreted in some cases what progress is. We can point out to certain examples of progress in our world in our in our cities that are becoming bigger. But looking at this another angle and looking at the fear that some people have of going off the grid and discussing the concept of the uh, the archon consciousness is not something entirely outside of ourselves. But <clears throat> but the archons being on the earth so long that that consciousness is very much integrated with human consciousness and with the human world. And this is not some sort of um, problem that started yesterday. The ongoing archonic infestation of the earth uh, has played a dominant role in this realm feeling like a backwards realm uh, where many people have backwards beliefs and doing things that are actually not serving them, even if they think they're operating out of selfishness. That's the insanity of this whole matrix, is even those operating out of selfishness 
and self-centeredness that have ideologies that are based around this. Ultimately, they hurt themselves. And because the blinders are on them in such an extreme degree, they don't see it. Now in the city, you're disconnected from nature. So it's easier in the city to fall under the spell, to live out your life thinking short term, to never think long term, to never think about who you really are. Now things are about what you're wearing and whether what you're wearing is attractive or not, whether even people of your own sex accept you or not in those cities based on what your interests are. What are your Facebook likes? What are your online activities? What are your true thoughts on the world at large? So in this bread and circus reality, where like attracts like. In this polluted world, we're taught about the importance of popularity, whether you're in a specific field or even a talk show host or just in general. To, to be someone, we are taught these false goals, to be someone that attracts the attention of others, to use beauty, intelligence, or charisma, those gifts or talents that we've been given but to use them for deceptive, selfish purposes, to try to absorb that energy. And so this world is a world where some people learn that life is about becoming a vampire. And instead of working on your own light, trying to direct the light away from others, where it gets your energy from external sources. And the city is a buffet of that. It's a buffet of different jobs where you can get your financial energy from. It is a buffet of external energies you can get your affection from. It is a buffet, it seems, of literally a, a, a seemingly endless table of food to walk into a grocery store, to walk into a restaurant. And for the greatest question that you have to ask yourself is not, how am I going to eat tonight? It's what am I going to eat tonight? Where am I going to stop and eat tonight? Where should I get gas tonight? Should I get cookies or should I get candy bars? Should I get whole milk or should I get 2% milk? Is it going to be a night for chicken or is it going to be a night for beef? Am I most attracted to that blonde or am I most attracted to that brunette? And women. Women in the cities, and now with their cell phones. A giant buffet. Which, which man is to be rewarded with my attention at this time? She may ask herself, sitting, sitting in that chair at Starbucks, going through her iPad, going through her cell phone. Who is the valuable man to me? With all of these options, with all of these flavors, with all of these chocolates, with all of these colors, with all of these sensations, with all of these options, which man am I going to play today? Which one will have earned his right to bask and insert the holy of holy of holy vaginas? Women will come to the aid of other women. When they see the programming called out. But I have not seen women come to the aid truly of other women. When the darker aspects of this arconic realm hurts those women. Whether it seems to come from a man or the system or the government or other women. Women as a whole with few exceptions. And that includes... That includes the listeners of this YouTube channel. What few women are left. What women haven't left because they've heard something that, oh, they're going to take the wrong way and just stay mute about the actual issue. Therefore, it's a channel of all males commenting, reinforcing everything I suspected the entire time. It's almost as if they don't even know how to respond To the words that I've just shared. And because I'm not straight up attacking women. Instead I'm addressing the programming. That's why there isn't countless uh, 
attacks on my person in regards to this video series. I, I expected a lot more. And it is maybe, potentially, uh, maybe it has something to do with the fact that I'm trying to take my time to make sure that it's understood that this is not some typical MGTOW video where this is about playing the, the, the gender war game or simply blaming women. But instead, looking at biology objectively and taking out ego, you know, the part of the ego that wants to say that humanity is a, an enlightened vessel, a biological vessel of life, that today is man and woman, like, represent some ascension. See, because I don't buy into that bullshit that we have ascended, that I am looking at society as it is, without trying to alter it into something more conscious than it actually is. And I don't really divide men and women in totality. Making note that it takes a man and a woman to make a female. Same thing for a male. It takes both a male and a female, a female and a male, to make either a female or a male. And so there has to be some responsibility, acknowledgement, understanding, epiphany, that whatever is going on with the planet's men and the planet's women emotionally, mentally, physically that's coming from a deeper level from the level that ties both the male and female together and so there's programming there's biology there's other things but the world that we're living in, this world of lies, this world of walls, this world of separation, this world of separate neighborhoods, wealthy versus poor, uh, gated communities, ghettos, all this based on money, all this based on people living in environments in those realms, in those cities, in those, in those urban dwellings, based on how much they've paid into the system worked for the system or have applied their cognitive abilities to gain a certain amount of resources by any means necessary to live in a certain type of a structure or to be able to pay a certain amount to live in a certain part of the planet, to live in a certain part of the country, to live that lifestyle by going out to eat, eating half your steak and then letting the busboy or the waiter come by and take that $15 value worth of steak, throw it into the garbage just to show that you have the ability to do it, that you can do it, that, you know, you don't really like throwing food away, but you know what? Just because you can throw food away, you will throw food away. Again, the question today in today's cities, even though there's a lot of poverty going on, it's not, it's not how do we eat tonight? It's what do we eat tonight? And, 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 and do we eat alone or do we eat with someone else? And are the people that we're picking in our life, be you a man or a woman listening, are those people that we're picking in our life genuinely good people? Or are they other rats or are they other slaves just like you or just like maybe a, a person that you could picture like today's typical slave to take yourself out of the equation? And we could see in today's restaurants, we can see people of like minds having dinner together. And they're not talking about real issues that affect real men and real women. They're affecting issues that affect half men and half women that have had their true masculine and feminine energy uh, neutered. Bathing in that world of electromagnetic frequency, never truly hearing their own thoughts, but literally living in some sort of a Petri dish testing lab Surrounded by cell phone towers. Surrounded by people with various levels of Babylonian programming. And many people living their lives. Giving their energy. To jobs for money. For rent that they'll never actually own. 
in the same way that someone may chase the dragon or smoke their cigarette fanatically or to drink something fanatically to, to chase that high. We see people chasing that orgasm. Never truly happy using the people that they're using in their relationships. Many women today are not happy. They're not genuinely happy in the way that some of them use men and throw men away emotionally and their lack of ability to connect with men on an intimate level. How easy it is you just take your clothes off and fuck somebody and like a gangbang, hopping off from one cock in a few weeks to a few months to hopping on somebody else. I've grown up in a society where my brain was hit with mind control that it was men, solely men that are what you would call cheaters or deceivers or immoral with their sexuality or unable to connect emotionally. And being born a man in this world where I am able to connect emotionally and I do have love in my heart and appreciation for the true feminine. It is only from a lifetime seeing my own sacred masculine feminine my own real attributes, my own real values, spat on and walked on and ignored by the women of this world. If I was not in that kind of a world, if I was not in that kind of an incarnation, this podcast would not be made. We would be talking about a news headline right now. And in the future, we will be returning our focus to regular current events. But there is no topic more important than this topic. For the here and now. Men by and large. Do what they do. To serve women and please women. And have female affection. Whether that means joining the military. And killing other men and women. And bringing back those resources. To the American woman or the European woman. Or the woman back at home. That is more concerned with her own survival. Her own hut. Her own water level in the toilet bowl. In which she poops in. And throws her bloody, dirty tampons. As far as what's going on in the rest of the world. And whether her boyfriend or man is actually doing something to make the world a better place. That's secondary. That's third. Primary is making sure that that rent is paid in that house they may never own. Especially if you don't pay your property taxes. Simply so you don't ever have to look at your own shit. You don't ever have to bury your own shit. You don't ever have to haul your own water. You don't ever have to grow your own food. The princess programming, even on a subconscious level, has affected women in the so-called conspiracy or awakening movement. That's why you see women that like to get involved, say they're awake, you know, and blame things on the what they call the 1% or go to a rally when it feels popular, when it's sexy, when it's the thing to do. But in general... We don't see support and we don't receive support. When we're at the front lines of this spiritual war, trying to call out the archons of this world, it is the most unattractive thing on some level to to women that have invested their very values in values that are promoted by the archonic system. Materialism. Only looking at a man's value as to whether he has a house or not. You know, there, there, there is a phrase, forgive them, Father, and if you'd like, you can say, forgive them, Mother. Forgive them, Father, forgive them, Mother. For they know not what they do. For they know not that these urban environments are not safer havens for them. They're dangerous places. They're dangerous places. When you have men and women divided now that don't even trust each other. When you have a society of women that think that the cell phone will actually be an effective protector in the years down the line. Simply because of all the technology around us. When those things are happening, you do not have a safe population. So when you have people that are living in the grid... They are connected to a grid that can't even be seen or detected by most human beings. 
There's the grid of human consciousness, which is polluted in and of itself. That's like where you pick it up on vibes from your neighbors or, you know, you move into an area and there used to be abuse or, you know, addiction going on in the apartment. And you're feeling affected by those things. That, that is city life. And when you're affected by traumas and your body's being traumatized by electromagnetic frequencies, which are unnatural to the human body, when you are being blasted with smart meters, uh, when you are doing drugs and you are chain smoking because your heart, you know, and, and being someone that struggled with chain smoking for years, I haven't smoked for five days at the moment. And when I don't smoke, by the way, I, I'm able to do these podcasts for longer periods because I am more in touch with my heart. And that's why these podcasts are happening. Because I have put myself in a space to where I don't have to deal with anybody for a couple of days. And I can be in touch with my heart. And if I want to speak, if I want to speak above my breath, I don't have to worry about a neighbor hearing me. Closest neighbor, by the way, is about a, a mile and a half away. I think I'm fine where I am. I'll take my chances. See, I like to say it out as it is. And I don't like to be in urban environments where I feel like somebody hates me simply because I stand against the system that they worship. There was no logical reason when I was living in Portland to face that type of attitude from so many people. And I understand some people questioned how, how truthful my experiences actually, actually were. And all I can say is I thank God every day. I thank the universe, the omniverse, all that is. Every day for getting outside of a major city and not having to live in another major city. In a day and age where I as a male have to hear about sexual assault news and, and look at the female's eyes and see how generally afraid they are to be alive. Despite all this worship of the city, despite all this worship of cell phones, despite all the worship of police, the women of today's urban environments have their eyes bugged the fuck out of their head. They are freaked the fuck out if they think that you might be someone that might at any second just snatch them and just start plowing your penis into them. And yet for me to be aware that this programming and fear is out there in the eyes of some people makes me the devil. And that's bullshit. Because there is nothing evil about the fact that I am a survivor. And it's only because at one point while living in the city and I said I would continue my life story podcast series later and I will. I will talk about my life between the age of 18 and 24. When living in the city, the evil absorbed me. I started shooting heroin to deal with this pain I was feeling. And that pain that I was feeling was also, I directly attribute that to a, a premonition or a sense that some bad shit was going to go down on the planet. And I believe that bad shit that went down on the planet was the staged managed event known as 9-11. In which most people think Afghanis in caves were behind that attack. When in reality this whole orchestrated thing has led to where we are now. And the very U.S. moves into the Middle East and other aggressive moves, uh, that's leading to the World War III scenario in which the United States is not designated to be the victor. From what I can tell, and from what my heart's telling me, and my brain, from all the information that I've read, the U.S. is not going to come out the victor in this next conflict. And so, being someone that that was very becoming increasingly sensitive at that time. And we'd even have a world super abundant in cell phone towers. We had quite a few by that time. But just being in the city itself and working at my job and taking several uh, buses from the, from the grocery store to the apartment that I was renting across town. Uh, being somewhat perceptive of the energies, even energies I didn't even understand at that time. It was only a matter of time before I was hurting myself in that way for only the period of a few years where most people never, ever get out because I started to educate myself about the world. And I started reading books that most people would not endorse, dealing with what's happening here in this matrix. 
And it was only the absorption of that truth into my body and into my field, into my mind, body, and spirit that I was able to rid myself of an addiction that can easily, that could have easily led, uh, ended my life, that has easily ended the lives of others. So we'll come back to this particular topic later. But in the cities, in the cities there is an abundance of ways to hurt yourself and hurt others. And what, I, what I'm not saying is that you can just exit the city and exit judgmental thinking. You know, you're still going to deal with, you're still going to deal with control freaks and manipulators and people that have been infected by archonic thinking out in the middle of nowhere. And the San Luis Valley, coming out to the San Luis Valley has taught me that this is a magical place because you can at least go somewhere where there's significantly less people. And so there's no one for me to blame. And I love it. I love to be in a situation where there's no one for me to blame, like in the city where it's just me here in this rural area. I'm visiting land I don't even own. I don't even have the money for my own land. But I have a sense of faith that I will be safe where I am at the moment, where I have my internet at the moment, first time in my life that I've had my own internet in my own name for years, uh, especially satellite, first time I've had satellite internet. And so it's clear to me that I faced a lot of opposition in my life, living independently, living off the grid. And a lot of voices in this world promote living in the grid, being dependent, uh, the peer pressure for social acceptance. And there's nothing attractive to women, by the way, about a man living off the grid unless he builds his own home. Now, if he has his own home, and if that man makes a nice little bathroom, and if that man has lots of, um, lots of water containers, all of a sudden that man living off the grid may be seen as valuable. Uh, there's nothing valuable about what I'm doing to the average female just living in an RV off the grid. Uh, even in that situation, the potential off the grid gr uh, girlfriend still wants to see the toilet. She wants to see the structure. She wants to see the things off the grid. And that's nice to have things. And I would love to have a nice shower and, you know, a nice bathroom and uh, a nice home with a nice wood stove. And I would like to work towards those things. But I'm not going to be so easily to, to penetrate, to infiltrate, to romanticize. When I build those things and all of a sudden women are going to start lining up, the emails will start pouring in. One after another, there might even be 10 in a single month. The second I actually have something other than nothing. Women that may have been watching me for years on YouTube. Ooh, I'm going to watch this guy. See if he ever actually ends up being somebody. That might actually have something for me to feed on. And they won't see it as feeding. But in their mindset, they're still looking at it that way. They are still in materialism. They are not in the spiritual body. And so in the grid, the man doesn't have to build the home. All the man has to do is join the system. All the man has to do is whatever is necessary, whether he's a gangster or not. Most women don't give a fuck. In fact, that turns them on even more. Then they're a bad boy. If they're running around hurting people, walking around with guns, in their mind, he might be a better protector. And so, despite all this bullshit about a conscious expansion of love and light and the rise of the feminine... And all this other new age bullshit that has nothing to do with brass tacks. Who is people? Who are people betting down with? Who are people, including men? Who are men picking in the world of women to be their wife or girlfriend? See, a lot of men end up in this trap where they're, they become addicted to their dick going off like a missile. And what happens is men chase love with their penis. To generalize. Of course not all of us do that. But I will generalize men. Because generalizing what most men and women do is really important in this killing process. Most men chase love with their penis. 
and they find a hot girl that has just the right size butt. Okay? Just the right size uh, buttocks. Just the right size hips. And his, his mammalian side has been programmed to want to duplicate carbon copies of himself through certain women that have certain genetics. And, and the man isn't even conscious of this. The woman isn't even conscious of this, of today's day and age. How our physical bodies are hardwired to be turned on by certain bloodlines and to be turned off by certain bloodlines. Even part of us wanted to go and kill and invade those countries with those predominant bloodlines. You know, maybe accuse them of 9-11. You know, maybe something ridiculous like that. Um, we're living in that world, ladies and gentlemen, where that shit is happening and you can't deny it. You cannot deny it. You can try to deny it. You can try to cite articles saying that the U.S. favors Muslims or some other insane bullshit. Um, we're living in a world where we're taught that we're different from each other and that there is constantly the struggle and each perceived group is being told propaganda about the other group being solely responsible for their woes. This way people don't learn about the New World Order. This way people stay in religion. They don't learn about Gnostic teachings. They certainly don't learn about the Archons infiltrating our world. And they certainly don't, don't open up their, their, their consciousness the idea that the alien invasion is happening now in consciousness. People normally, women, men, don't normally ask themselves how a lot of this does come down to relationships between men and women and the people that we pick. So a lot of men have fallen into this trap that some of them are not able to get out of. And they find a woman that they enjoy her genetics. He enjoys her pheromones. He enjoys her body. He enjoys the scent of her clothes made in China. That just seems to combine with her body scent. And it seems sexy to him. Uh, the perfumes, the, the, the toxic lotions that she may have bought at Walmart. Doesn't matter. Smells like strawberry. Dude still gets a stiffy. So there's biological things that have literally been programmed into the male body. That despite how conscious he may be about certain things, a stiffy will occur through being exposed to a certain combination of smells and sights. Are you with me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me now? Everything I just said applies to the female. Doesn't matter how evil the male may be. If he exerts a certain scent, if he acts like a dominant bad boy, he may be perceived as a better protector. Even if she looks new agey, even if she spins around counterclockwise and goes, I am a goddess, you know, and, and, and she plays maybe music from Inya or uh, Madonna or um, I don't know. What do supposed spiritual women listen to in today's day and age? <laughs> Uh, but Bjork, she's going to be listening to Bjork. Yes, yeah, spinning round and round and round, saying that she is now the evolved DNA. I, I'm, I'm going too far, folks. I've just, you got to understand, I, I'm from Portland, Oregon. Every now and then, you're going to be like, whoa, Nelly, Alex Answer, he's been to some shit. I told you, I was born in Portland. You know, you got this this movie, you know, Born on the 4th of July, Tom Cruise. You got Born East LA, LA with uh, the Cheech and Sean guys. I have my own movie, Born in Portland, Oregon. Um, so you have, you have cities today that more and more through the environments... Through the toxicity, the pollution, uh, the cell phone towers, the smart meters, the negative thoughts, the geoengineering, the constant surveillance that people can hear that triggers a sense of fear and trauma, especially when it's in a new plane or a, a new drone or something that flies really low over their house. It creates a sense of anxiety in a day and age where the government tells you every single day that you're being spied on. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> <coughs> 
you know, I'm I'm always struggling with smoking. I'm not going to apologize for that, but it um it's something that I struggle with a lot. It, it's not a matter of quitting smoking. I'm always quitting smoking. It's a matter of staying off at five days, staying off at ten days. That's not where that's not a realm where gum can help you, and other things can help you. So. Those recommendations are horrible recommendations. Cold turkey is the only way to go. And facing your stress, facing your loneliness, facing your pain, facing your isolation. I have used smoking to cope with extreme, extremely painful emotions. uh, Relating to a sense of rejection and loneliness from this world. uh, From the world of women. How women can be so silent and, and so fake, act like they actually care about me and my miss- mission, and comment here and there in certain videos and absolutely keep their mouth shut when I share from the heart. That tells me everything I need to know. So cities today are places where the archons want people to be, and archons will work through people, through mind control, to basically tell them that if you exit the cage, uh, you are not going to be safe. You are not going to have enough water. You're going to be too hot. You're going to be too cold. You're not going to have enough. You're not going to have, you're not going to be clean. You're going to be a dirty girl. You're going to be a dirty boy. Nobody's going to like you. What would your mom think? What would your dad think? Why would you leave your job? You have a good job now. You're making $15 an hour. Why would you leave your slavery? Why would you leave your own ability to be it? I'm every woman. Oh yeah. You get to rent your own fucking shithole for a thousand dollars a month in a city that one day could be under attack from foreign troops. Oh, I don't know. In the next 10 years, the archons don't want people living off the grid in freedom. That's where this whole system is in place right now. To put out news and information and there's this one story about a guy that dug a pond that was harvesting his own rainwater it's one guy folks one guy and the same article has been written about him for years and people believe it or not they look at the guy as an example well we're not going to let ourselves be an example because they already made an example out of that guy but you don't see people writing articles about way 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 This happened five fucking years ago. It's 2015. How many millions of people in America are living off the grid, harvesting rainwater in areas, there's parts of America where it is actually still legal. There is no, there is no nationwide ban on harvesting rainwater that's being enforced. There are rumors of statewide bans, but there are also counties where it is completely permitted regardless of what the state has put out. Now, some of the stuff likely is going to creep up to bite us in the ass, but do you really think it's going to be safer in the city with millions of people on food stamps living side by side that absolutely hate each other? That honestly think more about being raped or raping each other than actually loving each other. Living in these bombed out energetic cesspools. Living in these cities during these times that we're in. With so many people suffering. So many people lonely. I understand there's a spell taking place. That this is how things are safer. That this is where things are happier. That these are environments where women are more likely to accept you as a male. So one of the primary ways that men are controlled by women if they seek female love or attention is to live in a city or a urban environment. And the same thing for women as they're going through a Rolodex of men using their cell phone, using their Facebook, using social media, using email. It's so much easier to play a man, especially when you don't believe in monogamy. When you have the gangbang mindset. But you're not a dirty girl. Oh no, you're free. It's a polygamous world where it's like a one big giant buffet. As much as you can fuck and suck. It's like a contest between you, yourself, and you. 
I know what this is like, folks. I know the world of the Archons. I escaped the world of the Archons. I escaped Portland, Oregon. I know what it's like to know women that literally their own self-esteem is how many men they've fucked, how many men they've hurt. I know what it's like to see women that are attracted to men sexually that are slaves simply because they have money, simply because those men are taller than them, simply because those men are not controversial, simply because those men are socially acceptable and they have popularity. I have seen the world of the Archons and I have escaped it. And I am here, not a voice in the wilderness, but a voice in the high desert. I see these cities as breeding grounds for lower consciousness, negative energy, people procreating babies, people just like them, willing to be a slave for the system, to live out their lives in a hamster wheel. They're trying to find a mate so they can fucking have an orgasm, to go back to their job and work and be someone that they're actually not, to eat genetically modified food that isn't actually good for them, but is actually changing their very genetics. And again, to bed down with another mate that actually enjoys kinky style, slavery style relationships with others. Making love to a man who's a slave. Making love to a woman who's a slave. All based on being turned on by that person. <clears throat> I highly recommend that the women that are still listening to this podcast series, as well as men, that want to learn more about the love bite. That you open up a new window and you listen to some of the radio interviews with Eve Lorgan. She also goes by Evie Lorgan. L-O-R-G-A-N. And what you're going to hear is hours and hours and hours of podcasts from Evie. uh, Talking about running a support group for contactees. And as a result of her experience doing that, she began to learn more about the love bite. And it's the idea of Cupid, which is the archetype on Valentine's Day, being a, a deceiving spirit that for whatever reason, for whatever agenda, Cupid directs human beings towards certain human beings. And it's like some sort of experiment that's going on, on, on a soul level. Doing with controlling reproduction and also creating chaos In situations where love already exists. So dark Cupid interferes. And this is the stuff that I learned early on in my life. The dark Cupid archetype interferes with genuine love. And directs people into bad relationships. And if you look at the choices that women are making today in their dating decisions. Who they're marrying who is ultimately their boyfriend in the end, regardless of their claims that they've awakened to anything whatsoever, be it spiritual or political. You look at who they pick and the values of said male partner. And from that perspective on, you see what's real. You see what's real in the real world versus the false world, where we men are so easily attracted to the hippie chick, to the, to the woman that calls herself the goddess, who, who oozes out her sexuality and attention when she wants that attention and energy looping back to her parasitically. We must understand the nature of what we are as human beings and stop seeing human beings, whether we're male or female, as some sort of enlightened god or goddess like deity. Instead, this is more of a fallen realm where today's major cities are more like energy harvesting centers than cities showing that we are the ones that we've been waiting for, that we are the conscious little teapots going round and round, round and round, pooping in the bucket, in the apartment that we'll never own, round and round, spraying ourselves with with perfume and, and putting pretty jewelry on and thinking that makes us conscious. This planet has become a cesspool toilet. In human relationships, the men that women are picking in today's day and age gives us all we need to know about where consciousness is today. I'm Alex Hansfrey. This has been another Archon podcast video series focusing on why the Archons want us stuck in these energy harvesting cities. And one of the main ways that men are kept in the cities 
is stay in the cities working these jobs in order to please the woman that they're with or in order to, com- to continue to please the variety of women in this world. So one year a woman joins him, the next she's left him. She's on to a new toy, a new lollipop, 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 oh, lolly, lollipop. She's on to a new lollipop, literally in less than a few weeks to a few, because it's a large buffet, folks. All you can fuck, drink, and eat. No need for love. Let's just call this liberation. And so you have human beings, you have women, where they realize that the resources are in the city. That living off the grid or living without technology is a very different world. Especially when you're living with men. And there's this primal fear, primal fear of getting too close or intimate. Especially with a man that might say, I love you. Especially with a man who's not chasing money. So the city is by and large our feeding grounds of men and women that are literally using each other like prostitutes in their own way. And as a result, there's a lot of negative energy. There is a lot of negative entities and mind control in major cities today. Despite this widespread denial and claims that these major cities are are showing the best and brightest of humankind, as many actually Portlanders would like to think of themselves, many of them being transplants, instead of the best of the nation, you're actually seeing the worst of the nation as the turds within the punch bowl, the toilet bowl, float to the top instead of sinking to the bottom, just like all the pollution that those people already threw in the in the river. Unfortunately, this human shit isn't floating to the bottom of the river. It's floated to the top. And so, there's a reason why the Archons want people to stay in cities. For the man to keep keep searching for a partner or a woman that will accept him for him. And women have a large selection of men around them that they can choose from with their cell phone that they can easily access and contact with a push of a button. There's a reason the Archons want you in the city.